day three in the house and I've just had the water connected. The plumber came through just five minutes ago and we're talking about the priority, which is to change the toilet or to figure out the toilet system. The toilet is on a septic tank, meaning that it's not connected to the sewerage line in the city. Actually, in this area, there are only a few places that have the sewerage line that runs through the streets. In my particular street, which is interesting, there is no place to connect to the sewer line, so I have to have a septic tank, meaning that all of the sewerage is stored on the property. This is pretty normal in a lot of rural areas, and this is the case from here. This is the toilet, right? And honestly, it works. It's been used like this forever since it was built. Straight down there is the septic tank. The septic tank toilets, the septic tank will store all of your sewerage. You call up a person that comes to basically pump your waste and take it away. And that's what everyone's doing around here. And it's the same with a lot of ski lodges. So I got the price for to change this to a regular toilet. And honestly, it's really <laughs> left me surprised. A thousand US dollars, 100 and 40,000 yen. You know, I asked the guy, can I just go and buy a regular toilet from the DIY store? And he says, no, no, you can't do that. You have to buy this specialized toilet for a septic tank, which makes sense. The reason being is that a regular toilet um, will flush a lot of water and that water will fill up the septic tank quicker, which means that you're constantly getting someone coming out and you're, you're paying for the service to change over your sewage and the most of your sewage will be water. So in an economic, you know, considering the, the financial side of that, it makes more sense not to use um, the regular toilet and it's just not the normal thing to do. But yeah, as I'm thinking through this, is it a bad thing? It sounds more hygienic to me actually when I think it through. I might look into that. But yeah, for now, the price is a thousand bucks per toilet. I'm probably gonna get two toilets. So talking, this is my priority. Now this is the thing that I wanna do first um, because the house is not livable. Also with the toilet situation, this house, whoever put this together in the beginning, they didn't run any water line into this toilet area. So I guess the original owners never felt the need to have a, a flushing system and I guess they bucketed water down there whenever they felt like they needed to. Um, so that's going to be another cost on top to put a water line in. But we have the toilet install for $1,000 per, so 2000 bucks. Let's allow like $1,000 for the water and I'm going to allow like 1500 for the plumbing the installation and labor costs. So we're looking at at least um, one, two, three point five, four, like at least four thousand bucks just to get the hardware and um, um, get the pipes installed and have the toilet operating. But there'll be sinks as well, so I have to run sinks up a few hundred bucks extra there for sinks. So probably looking at five thousand bucks, and that's this doesn't include the shower, right? Just been cutting up the floor here in the bathroom. And I found like how this floor has been propped up. It's pretty wild. So we got this here. And this. This is what was structurally holding up the floor. I have a full load with me and I'm gonna drop this off to the, um, the disposal place. It's called Miyoko Clean Center. And I should be able to get rid of this. And it's almost, you know, out of all of the stuff I took out of the house, it's almost everything. I've fit almost everything inside the car. So I'll, let's see how much it costs. Seven thousand to get rid of all of the stuff that was not burnable, which was like electronic things, um, furniture, and then the rest, all of the futons, which are burnable, futons, pillows, those sorts of things. 
paper, cardboard. That was like 900 yen. So basically you can say 8,000 yen for that whole entire load that I just took. Welcome to day four in the house. And as you can see, the lights are on. I've managed to put electricity on, the gas is on, and the water is running, which is really awesome. It makes life much easier. For the termites, they seem to have kind of disappeared for now. Um, I sprayed them, but then I put down the um, this kind of food that they take back to their nest and hopefully that kills the colony. I've put both of that down, the spray and this food. I was able to um, put a coat of this like sealer on the walls all through the kitchen. The kitchen's pretty much cleared out as you can see, which is really good, it's very helpful. It just puts into perspective like the size of this place. It's actually a bit bigger than you than you imagine. Yeah, I've taken out almost everything that I can. Um, I took off this shelf off the wall. I think it just brings some light through. All of the cabinets, I've taken them out. I just don't need them. I don't need that space. Haven't quite decided about this big one behind me yet. What do you guys think? Do I keep that there? I've coated that with this, this primer so I can go over that with the wall color. I'm actually, for this room, I decided that for this timber work you see in here, like these ones, I'm actually gonna bring them into white because I'm gonna bring them as the same as the wall color. Because in the kitchen, I just want it to look a bit more um, modern. So the rest of the house, I'm cool with keeping in Japanese. The kitchen, I want it to be more modern and a little bit more cleaner. I want it to look like it's hygienic. I want it to be hygienic. So to give it a fresh coat of paint, that's important to me. What do you think? I think it seems like because the kitchen has been replaced like in parts of it, they've definitely done these little like they've tweaked it over the years. You can see this trim around the window that's been added for whatever reason. This shelf here, you know, it's something's been going on with that. So I'll take that cover off at some point. But um, like these these doors here, it doesn't kind of match. And I just want to bring it all into white and I think it'll look really nice. So I've cut it all up. You can't tell, but it's actually in primer now. I'll jump into the bathroom so you can see kind of what mess I've made in there. Yeah, I cut the floor away. The plumber came through. So I thought it might be good for him to check it out. Um, I looked as good as I can for the termites. And you can see the damage here that they've been doing over the years. Um, it has been, someone has, the guy I think has attempted to fix it. It was super bodgy. Um, the floor is just floating. But all in all, it's not too bad. The condition is not too bad. And two plumbers come through. One just said he's too busy for something like this. And the other plumber said a few weeks. So less than a few weeks now on the 14th, I think of August, he can come and check out changing the toilet over to a Western style toilet. This is a septic tank toilet. I was hoping to have something like the modern, super cool modern Japanese style toilet, but it seems like I can only have a toilet that has minimal water flush because it's on septic. I'm still researching that now, but to put it into perspective, even the super low flush toilets these days, they flush around four to five liters of water each flush. Where, and you compare it to the old school toilets, it's less than half. It's probably, the old ones are 10 liters, probably plus. And the low flow toilet for a, a septic tank is 200 to 400 milliliters. So it's super low, which means, you know, you don't have to change the septic toilet as much. And apparently if there's too much water in a septic tank, it causes a problem for the septic tank. So it should be, you know, I, I don't exactly know how it works. Feel free to drop a comment in there if you know exactly. This is what I'm reading and what I've been taught by a plumber. The consistency of sewerage needs to be at a certain level for the pump system to work and for the septic tank to work. So to add extra water isn't a good thing. So my choice now is do I keep this urinal thing here, which, you know, it's this small space. There's a small urinal which is kind of good. I understand people don't want people urinating on the toilet seat and figure out, um, this is probably pretty small space to have the toilet in here. What do you guys think? 
I was thinking about reconfiguring and just creating just one toilet, but this is a six bedroom house. Or just make this whole space combine, build a wall here in front and where this door is, build the wall and combine these two into one toilet space. What are your thoughts there? I spent some time in this room today. This is probably the worst room for the mold because this wall um, has the snow buildups. Ground level is down there. And I think the snow, you see they have these, um, uh, like these hooks here on the windows. There'll be um, timber that goes across that, which is down there to stop the windows from caving in when the snow builds up from down there and above the windows up to the, probably up to the roof. So I put a coat of this sealer over this clear sealer it's like glue basically it feels like a glue and water is added to it i'll paint that tomorrow with the white paint i'm gonna change all of the color the walls in here maybe not this thing this wall color on this one part as a feature but i'll see how that goes the rest i just want to have white walls and brighten it up so the ceiling i cleaned up today so there's no mold up there anymore that's nice the natural timber there i'll keep that as it is Super hot today. I'm going to take a quick break and just, there's a, there's a really nice breeze coming through the door. So when I got here today, I was, it's like 30 plus degrees Celsius outside. And I was super happy to discover when I opened the door for the house, it was much cooler in the house. Some of the windows were open, but a lot were closed. That's a good sign for the insulation. You know, I got here after 12 o'clock PM and yeah, it was comfortable to be inside. That seems like a good sign that the insulation here at least is doing something. <sighs> when I was, and this is hard work, but when I was like, I actually started working when I was pretty young. And I think it started because of my brother. We used to do a Sunday paper round in on Sunday mornings. Sunday newspapers were delivered to our house, my family house. And my brother, it was my brother's job to um, deliver these newspapers. But there were some days he didn't, he just kind of woke up and poked me and said, go out, you're gonna be doing these papers today. And the money was good, 40, 50 Australian dollars for a few hours of work. And, um, you know, for a 12 year old kid getting like 30, you're guaranteed 30 bucks, Australian dollars. And we're talking years back, leaflets, delivery, dropping all them around. And like my mom did most of that actually, but that's another story. But then work really just kind of work started happening. And I started saving money from like 12 years old and started doing like a car washing thing locally. And my sister did that with me. So by the time I was 15, every on Sundays, leaflet delivery <clears throat> throughout the week and do car washing. And I used to sand furniture for a guy, a family friend, and I'd go in on a Saturday morning for four or five hours. And on a Friday night, I would work in a Chinese restaurant washing dish dishes. And for a Friday night, for a few hours, I'd get 50 bucks an hour. All this time, I feel like I've been working pretty hard. And then in between that, all of these, all of like my younger years, I would work with my dad, who is a painter builder, doing this kind of stuff. So I've worked hard for a long time, but it's been fun and rewarding. And now I know how to do stuff around a house like this. I've got a pretty good old school foundation on how to do things. The space is looking good. The how cool is that now that the, the shelf has gone on the right, you're getting that light come through and I'll come up with a better system for those pots. I don't want them blocking the light in the window. I coated up this ceiling as well. You can see it glistening there. This is a bit of a mess down here, but this is the paint for the ceilings, the walls, the roof. I'm going to coat the roof up. You can get some samples here for um, exterior walls, but I haven't decided on that. I'm looking at something deeper. I feel like this looks nice. These are quite different, but um, these are matte. This is gloss and I have another few, but they're not here. Some of the trash I still have to take down to the garage. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, huh? Look at the sky. This is what I have kind of left. These old sofas. It's a little bit hard to see everything. If anyone wants to come and get this, you're welcome to it. 
It's been a bit of a whirlwind up until now and getting everything arranged. I'm really happy I got the, the electricity, the water, the gas going. What I really need to do and what I plan to do tonight is write down a schedule. And obviously just as important, put the cost beside that. That's it for day four. Happy travels.